Today on VRS TV investigates a completely brand new light from Kessel with a pretty unique purpose that defines it as the right tool for your right job. What that job is and how well the new Kessel AP9X performs in our light testing roundup is coming up. Hi, I'm Randy with this Friday's BRS TV Investigates, where we experiment on our own tanks so you don't have to experiment on yours. And today we have our hands on the latest Kessel AP9X and running it through our series of BRS TV Investigates light tests for spread, spectrum, and par to help you decide if this sleek looking LED is going to be the right tool for your tank lighting needs. You consistently hear us talk about using the right tool for the right job, and today you're going to see what that means using the Kessel AP9X, not only for tanks filled with fleshy LPS and gardens of colorful zoanthids or pallies, but how we believe that this light and its predictable light spread and distribution is going to be a solid lighting choice for arguably one of the most popular and at times most challenging tank types reefers strive for, being the mixed reef. In my opinion, mixed tanks are by and large some of the most popular tank types out there, and even myself as a self-proclaimed stickhead, I find it hard to not be tempted by a gorgeous Scully, rainbow Acan colony, or even the latest bounce mushroom morph. So for those coral collector type reefers who strive to keep all types of coral, choosing the right lighting tool that's capable of meeting the par demands from SPS to LPS and softies all in the same tank is very important. And today you'll see how the AP9X has changed the lens design and optics and reflectors to create a uniquely rectangular distribution shape of light and predictable par zones for both LPS and SPS corals. This is definitely one of those tools that not only looks great over your tank, but also makes the corals inside the tank look awesome at the same time. Let's get right to the testing of the 185 watt AP9X by focusing on the three main components of reef tank lighting, which are spread, spectrum, and par. Spread meaning that we'll test the light distribution and optimal mounting of the two dense matrix LED clusters, each with 55 LEDs housed under a single lens, and how their fixed spacing at about nine and a half inches on center inside the AP9X body perform in a 24 inch by 24 inch testing area. We will also test the spectrum output of the AP9X, and spoiler alert, it's nearly identical to the A360X, and something we've grown to trust of being capable of producing some of the best tanks that we've ever had here at BRS, including the BRS160 and all three ULM tanks. And finally, we look at PAR and the recommended settings to help dial in the AP9X to meet our corals PAR needs for energy and coloration. So with that, let's dive into today's testing that we will use later on to create our template starting point settings that you can use for your own tank. And that all begins with the three aspects of spread and how many AP9Xs we recommend for 24 inch by 24 inch and 48 by 24 inch coverage area, how to space two AP9Xs optimally over that 48 inch area for the most even light distribution and most importantly, the ideal mounting height for the 9X that achieves the best spread possible without losing too much light outside of our tanks into the surrounding room. So how many AP9Xs do we recommend? I'll make this one easy and say that for LPS and mixed reef tanks, one 9X will meet our needs for a 24 inch by 24 inch testing area and likely upwards of a single 36 inch tank while two AP9Xs are our choice for the four foot by two foot tank like this 120 gallon. How did we come to that conclusion? Let's take a look at the data that we tested in our attempt to find the ideal spacing for two Kessel 9Xs, where as a starting point, we mount them evenly spaced across our 48 inch tank with the dead center of each light at 16 inches from the left and right edges respectively. Then we measure a grid of 66 PAR data points 12 inches deep in the tank to compare the average PAR in the center against the average PAR in the outer edges. In this test, because the PAR is naturally hotter in the center of the tank where a majority of the light intersects, we're looking to space the 9Xs closer to the outer edges until the average PAR on the left and the right is at or within 75% of the center average PAR which after spacing two AP9Xs further and further apart one inch at a time while testing at each stop, we finally crossed that 75% goal where we find our BRS recommended spacing with the center of both lights mounted at 13 inches from the left edge and 13 inches from the right edge, giving us an average par difference of 317 versus 410 or 77%. 
Next up for spread is the third most important aspect of spread performance, and that is to determine the ideal mounting height, where our goal is to strike a balance between finding that sweet spot height where our 24 inch square testing area has the most even par distribution as possible, while maintaining at least 85% or more of the average par inside the tank, because the higher you mount your light, the more efficiency you lose to light spilling outside of the tank. We start the mounting height test with the AP9X installed just six inches off the top of the water, and from our grid of 36 par data points taken six inches deep in the tank, we find that distinct rectangular par distribution shape I mentioned earlier, with a center hotspot at 725, outer ring at 238, and a total average overall par at 392. It's pretty obvious that this mounting height isn't ideal, so we'll need to raise the light higher to improve the spread in the front and the back of the tank. However, just by looking at the AP9X design and the heat map at this ultra low mounting height, although there are two lights splitting the length of the tank, there's really only one light splitting the front and back width, which is what provides that maximum left and right coverage area for tanks that are similarly rectangular shaped. So based on this performance, we continued to raise the light one inch at a time, testing the total average par of the same 36 data points along the way, and stopped the light test when we mounted it at 10 inches off the top of the water, and we reached our 15% efficiency loss threshold, which allowed us to cool down the center from 725 at six inches to 494 and increase the par spread into the outer edges to 259, giving us our BRS recommended mounting height this 10 inch mounting height is the same we used for the light spacing test and what we will use to provide you with settings and par numbers in just a moment. But now that we have found the ideal spread for the AP9X, let's check out the data that we gathered for the second of the three components to reef tank lighting with a couple of spectrum output tests. So spectrum is something that I feel Kessel does extremely well since the inception of Kessel Logic which recognizes reef lighting as a primary component to coral life support and energy requirements rather than a fun toy or gadget. And because of that, choosing a spectrum that meets both the coral's needs and tank that looks amazing is one of the easiest adjustments you'll make with your AP9X. So to break that down even further in our spectrum testing section, we'll look at the three aspects of what spectrum channels the AP9X offers how to use those channels intuitively to choose our recommended spectrum mix, how the final recommended spectrum compares to the gold standard ATI Blue Plus T5 bulb, and what you can expect from the single lens design in terms of blending each LED color into one even blend inside our tanks. There are no surprises here in the four controllable spectrum channels from the AP9X compared to similar channels that we saw with the A360X. However, with the built-in Wi-Fi control of the 9X, accessing those channels is as quick as scanning the QR code label and making adjustments, which is about as plug and play as you can get. The color channel scales from zero to 100%, giving you the option of a heavier blue when set to zero and adding in more white as you climb the scale. Basically, you can set this channel to what you think looks best, trusting that the blue band of spectrum, where corals draw a major portion of their energy needs from, will remain constant. After that, there are three channel options with a violet channel, red channel, and green channel, which can be controlled on their own via intensity sliders when choosing your spectrum. And that leads us into the next aspect of investigating spectrum by choosing a mix of these four channels that we feel provides the widest spectrum representation between 400 and 500 that we target with each light we test. This one again is pretty simple using the same spectrum settings we chose for the Kessel A360X, and that is the blue color channel set to 20%, violet at 100% to widen out that blue band, and red set to 20%, where we've seen Kessel lights highlight orange and red accents in our fish and corals, like we found in Ryan's Softy ULM tank. So here's how that spectrum mix looks compared to the ATI T5 Plus bulb. And as you can see, it does track pretty well within that target blue range. However, more prominent at 458 instead of the 430 to 440 range, and has a deeper near UV range beyond 400 in around 390. Now we take the BRS recommended spectrum mix and test the dense matrix lenses at their ability to maintain that spectrum when tested inside a tank full of water. 
Blending each individual LEDs into one uniform spectrum underwater has proven to be difficult for some reef LEDs to accomplish due to the nature of how ripples at the water surface tends to break up the individual colors, which sometimes leads to that disco ball type effect inside our tanks. So with our spectrometer measuring 10 different points underneath a 60 gallon test tank, we see how well the tight grouping array of 110 LED chips under two single lenses performs at maintaining our recommended spectrum, which provides some of the most even spectrum blending on the market without the need for diffusers and some of the closest performance to T5s that we've tested. With that, we've now covered two of the three main components to lighting your reef using the Kessel AP9X and walk away more informed on how high to mount them, how many you need to cover common tank sizes, and what BRS recommends for spectrum settings. But how do we use that information to really hone in on optimal settings for different coral types with different PAR needs? That's exactly what we're covering in this next section of PAR and what intensity settings we recommend with the data to back them up. Those recommendations start by using a single AP9X to light our 24 inch by 24 inch area where we share the intensity settings that we use to achieve a tank full of lower light demand LPS softies and pallies as well as the most common mixed reef tank with some higher par demand SPS near the top and middle of the tank and strategically placed LPS and softies in the lower par zones near the bottom. First is that LPS and softy dominated system where our goal is to fill the entire tank with as much par in a range between 75 to 150 as possible and we do that by placing the 9X at the recommended 10 inches off the water and lowering the overall intensity of our recommended spectrum ratio to 20% of the initial settings that we shared in the spectrum section. That means our color channel remains the same at 20%. However, the overall intensity we set to 20%. And since the overall intensity slider doesn't control the violet and red channels, we lower them to an equal 20% ratio with the violet channel set to 20 and red set to four. Using those settings, we tested grids of par at six, 12 and 18 inches deep in our test tank to find 70 out of 108 data points within in that 75 to 150 goal, which works out to be 65% of the entire tank or just 5% short of our typical goal, yet still a pretty good performance. So now it's here that we typically share settings for SPS dominated systems, but given the shape of the light spread and predictable distribution, attempting to find settings that filled the tank with 70% or more of par within 200 to 350 wound up being more of a whack-a-mole game, but in doing so, we discovered that the AP9X makes for a great mixed tank light with zones of the tank in that 200 to 350 par for acro sticks and other SPS, as well as predictable pockets of 75 to 150 for those LPS and ZOAs and similar corals for those who want to add them to the tank. With that in mind, we set that overall intensity slider to 55%, violet to 55%, and red channel to 11%, which created 51 out of 108 data points throughout the entire tank in that 200 to 350 range, and the rest falling very close to the upper end of 75 to 150, meaning that depending on your aquascape and as the corals grow to create shadows underneath, we're left with ideal pockets of par that will fall within that 75 to 150 range for your favorite Acan, Duncan Colony, Scoli, or even Zoa Garden. Next, we find out if that performance for mixed tanks and LPS is linear when we double the tank's length and double the AP9Xs. So we mounted two 9Xs at the same recommended 10 inches and spaced them at the recommended 13 inches on center and then measured the par across 198 data points in the top, middle, and bottom of the tank. Again, to reach those LPS and Softy dominated tank par goals, we reduce the intensity across all channels to 20% of the original, which is the exact same settings that we used on the 24 inch tank. And surprisingly, we measured 129 out of 198 test points in that 75 to 150 range, which works out to be exactly the same 65% of the entire tank that we found on the 60 gallon cube. As for the same test of two AP9Xs set to higher intensities over our four foot by two foot test tank, again, we're looking for as many points as possible in those higher par goals for SPS between 200 and 350. And with our channels set to 50% of max, meaning intensity at 50, violet at 50, and reds at 10, we find an amazing exact replica performance as our 60 gallon cube for mixed reefs 
With a 93 out of 198, or 47% of the entire tank top to bottom, and a true definition of predictable distribution on all fronts. We've tested other Kessel lights, like the super wide-angle floodlight of the Kessel A360X, the extreme narrow angle spotlight of the Kessel T365, and now the AP9X, which falls somewhere in between as a really interesting option for mixed tanks with intentional high and low par zones at the same time in the same tank. And regardless of the specific job that you're trying to achieve, it's pretty easy to see that Kessel has a solution. Our mixed reefs do come with some unique challenges, like I mentioned earlier, because of the different par needs for the different coral types and the most valuable tool available to us reefers to ensure that the lights are optimally set for those specific needs of a mixed reef is a PAR meter. But did you know that there's a basic way to use a PAR meter and a pro way that you may not have even considered? Before setting up your lights, you need to see Ryan's PAR meter video that shows you the secrets to using one correctly.